Hello everyone, welcome back to the Taped Podcast, the most creative podcast in the world. We are your hosts as always, myself, Mickey T. And me, Nostalgia. And joining us today for another edition of our Worst to Bests is the MF Doom guy himself, Jackson Burns. <laughs> yes, glad to Woo-hoo. be here, man. I'm, I'm I'm stoked for this one. I've been I've I've been working. I've been listening to some music. I've, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. Fuck yeah! I am ready too. Because today we're doing a very special Worst to Best, a short one, but a special one. Because today we are going to be doing a Worst to Best on the one and only Tyler the Creator. Mm-hmm. It's been a long time coming with Tyler, and with the new album out, no, there's no better time to do it. So, yeah, with that in mind, we're going to be including all of Tyler's like six studio albums, as well as the Bastard mixtape. We won't be including any compilations or live albums or EPs, so uh, don't expect to see the Grinch EP at the top of our lists. So, <laughs> <laughs> And, yeah, without further ado, you know how this works. Let's get right into it. And we're going to start at our number seven picks. And in my opinion, Tyler, the creator's worst album at number seven is Goblin. And I agree. My number seven pick is Goblin. My number seven pick is also Goblin. All right. <laughs> hey, nothing controversial here. All right. We're clear. And First round of controversial. Clear. Let's talk about the controversial album, Goblin. And um, yeah, Tyler's debut album also happens to be his worst album, in my opinion. And while there's things that I can appreciate Goblin for, I just don't like this album. It's actually the only Tyler album that I'd consider bad. And knowing how much Tyler would progress artistically after this point, it's aging pretty bad on a lot of fronts. You know, to highlight some things that I actually like about the album, I think that a lot of the tracks that I enjoyed from this thing are genuinely fantastic and are executed very well. I like how Goblin ties in and tails end, tail ends the, the storyline that we see happening in the Wolf Trilogy. And that, like, raw anger and aggression is probably at its most driven out of all of Tyler's work. But that's it, really, because there's a lot of things that hold back Goblin a lot for me. You know, for one, a lot of Tyler's production on this album is just bad, honestly. Sure, it sounds like it has a bigger budget than much of what we saw in his debut mixtape Bastard, while also maintaining that raw edge, but a lot of the sounds on here are just very thin, very tacky, dated. Sometimes the mixing can be a little muddy, and the sounds can often be pretty boring and plain it has its moments but it's there's just lots of moments that i just straight up don't like because the production is just not that good now a lot of the tracks on this thing drag on for way too long as well and don't need to be as lengthy as they are and the album itself is bloated with so many unnecessary filler tracks that are just there to pad out the album's length not to mention there's some pretty shitty tracks on this thing that are just straight up some of tyler's worst songs now tyler lyrically is more or less rehashing a lot of the same ideas that he was utilizing on bastard he revs it up by 10 but at points it comes off like he's trying a little too hard to be as offensive as he can be and his clapbacks at people who don't like him seem kind of bitter and half-baked to me. Now I feel like if Tyler was able to go over so much more and branch out into other subjects, then I probably would have liked it more, but for the most part, Goblin is just so-so with its rehashes of topics done better on Bastard and the production doesn't help either. Like I said earlier, the fact that Tyler has progressed so much over the past 11 years that it's kind of rendering a lot of what Tyler did on Goblin to be so much more dated and amateurish in comparison. And there's definitely tracks that I do enjoy, but for what it's worth, Goblin is easily Tyler at his weakest for me, and it's an album that I would rarely return to. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, when it comes to Goblin and Bastard, I kind of subconsciously group those two together. Um, and it's a little hard for me to talk about Goblin without bringing up Bastard in some capacity, because I do think that uh, most of the things that Goblin does, I think Bastard just does a bit better. I think on the production front, um, Goblin is a little more polished up, um, a little more clean, which doesn't necessarily suit the sound that Tyler's going for here. Um, there's some beats that are just straight up lifeless. They're they're very bland. And uh, Tyler's anger throughout this uh, record, his angst, um, while still very much unrestrained, still very much nihilistic, seems a little more you know all over the place a little more forced uh a little you know directionless at times it just kind of seems like he's pointing his middle fingers everywhere just for the sake of it and there's times where it's so blatantly angry without any further substance that it kind of becomes a little difficult to enjoy a little difficult to latch onto um 
it does very little to progress the sound that he uh, established on his debut. It, if anything, it kind of is a step back from its predecessor. And, you know, the length of this project is just unnecessary as well. There's, as you said, a lot of tracks that just pad out the album. There's a lot of tracks that are just straight up bad, for lack of a better word. And, you know, there's there are times where Tyler does attempt something new and kind of, uh, you know, it, it results in some good tracks. But overall, I think uh, most of Tyler's endeavors on here tend to miss. Yeah, yeah, I agree with pretty much everything you guys said. Um, for me... Uh, Goblin is exactly what happens when you take everything that Tyler, uh, that made Tyler great on Bastard away from him and leave pretty much only the shitty parts. Uh, Goblin is easily Tyler's most edgy album to date, and despite him rapping about similar topics on his previous project, this is the album where that part of his music lost a lot of its charm, at least for me. Uh, I understand that this album is largely character-based, and it continues the storyline started on Bastard, but that doesn't change the fact that the songs don't sound all that great. Uh, the highs in this album for me come in the form of the opening and closing tracks, as it's the only part of the album where I feel like Tyler let even a smidge of his actual self shine through, and the lows of this album, unsurprisingly, come from the moments where Tyler's gross lyrical content are paired with some of the worst production on any of his albums to date, uh, specifically his track Transylvania, which technically isn't produced by him, uh, probably the worst Tyler album I've ever heard, T sorry, Tyler song I've ever heard, I really do not like that song. Um... I also think this is his most dated project, uh, even if it's not his oldest. I mean, this album really did age like warm milk, and uh, it shows through and through. I think that at its best, Goblin is a mid-sign of the times, and at its worst, it's a concept album that completely missed the mark at uh, almost every turn. And that is my opinion on Goblin. Mm. All right. Uh, my favorite tracks from Goblin are Yonkers, She, Nightmare, Goblin, and Golden. My least favorite tracks are Sandwiches, Fish, uh, BSD, Transylvania, Tron Cat, Analog, Radicals, and Her. Um, my favorite tracks are Goblin, Yonkers, She, and Tron Cat. My least favorite tracks are Sandwiches, Fish, uh, BSD, and I do agree with Jackson. Transylvania is probably my least favorite Tyler track. Yeah, my favorite tracks are Goblin, Yonkers, and Golden, and my least favorite track is Transylvania. All right, moving on to our number six picks. I chose Cherry Bomb. I chose Bastard. Sorry, I had to scroll down. <laughs> I <laughs> chose Cherry Bomb as well. I'll go All right, you can go. Yeah, you can go after me then, Jackson. Okay, cool. Yeah, Cherry Bomb is always a popular pick for Tyler's worst album since it was hounded when it came out. And while it has certainly seen a bit more respect being brought to it like years later... I still don't think it's good. Hell, I don't even think it's bad. It's neither. It's just in the middle for me. Now, on one hand, there's tracks and ideas that I do enjoy on Cherry Bomb. Like, I will not deny that tracks like the nerd-inspired opener Death Camp and Smuckers are true highlights. And I do think that the eclectic sounds could have worked if the album felt much more cohesive and sonically felt unison. You know, it's cool that Tyler is drawing from inspirations like punk and neo-soul, but then again... It just falls flat on so many fronts, and it's plagued with issues that hold it back from its full potential. For one, the obvious critique being the mixing, as Cherry Bomb is filled to the brim with tracks that are just so poorly mixed. So many tracks on this album feel so lackluster in mixing that it's honestly distracting. Like, the overly distorted mixes on tracks like Pilot, Run, Keep the O's, and Cherry Bomb especially are the biggest defenders of this issue. And it also doesn't help that a lot of Tyler's vocals are so low that you often can't even hear what he's saying. He's practically unintelligible for some of this album. To be fair, this isn't an issue in regards to Cherry Bomb since Tyler is saying nothing of value here. His lyrics are just very faux rebellious and full of themselves throughout Cherry Bomb's runtime, and it's very unlikable to me. Not to mention, I'd probably like fucking Young Perfect more if not for the lyrics, but I suppose I can appreciate Tyler for tackling such a taboo subject like that. You know, Tyler's neo-soul influence tracks aren't as interesting or as amazing as they would be down the road. In fact, I find quite a lot of them to be kind of boring and oftentimes bland. He does show himself to be a solid arranger with some of these cuts, but generally speaking, I just find very few of them to be worthwhile on Cherry Bomb. Also, I see Cherry Bomb as a bit of a transitional moment for Tyler's career, as it seems like there's a bit of a branching out from the... a bit of a branching out from and disillusion with Odd Future since... You know, Sid is the only real person on the collective to appear on this record, and 
Tyler is now scoring features from the likes of Kanye and Lil Wayne and the embrace of Neo Soul you can see and with the embrace of Neo Soul you can see Tyler is getting more into other sounds as well and you know he would master them later on down the road and explore more stuff you know sort of abandoning the hardcore hip-hop sound with it. So yeah there's definitely some really good songs on Cherry Bomb but as a whole it's just a mess of an album and I think it's one of his weaker albums. Uh yeah so just because Goblin is Tyler's most edgy album, by no means means this is most controversial. I think that Cherry Bomb absolutely takes the cake for that one. Uh, Cherry Bomb is probably one of the most argued over Tyler albums ever, as the people who love it are extremely vocal about it, and the people who don't like it uh, fucking hate it. And for the most part, I think that this is largely due to the fact that the individual tracks on this project are actually really, really good, but e each song varies extremely heavily in tone to the point where the flow of the album feels feels very jolty and out of place. Uh, for example, one of the most beautiful songs on the album, Two Seater, is immediately followed by the bloated and distorted track, The Brown Stains of Dark East Latifah Part 6 through 12 Remix, that features Schoolboy Q and one of the loudest moments on the album. Uh, overall, I do think that if Tyler had spent more time really shelling out his vision for this project, it would be uh, much higher on my list, but I really can't see giving this thing anything over a 6 with the whiplash that I get every time I listen to this record. But even with that being said, I, I don't really agree with the complaint that this album is poorly mixed or that it's way too loud and bass boosted. I mean, obviously, yes, I, to both of those things, like it, it is, but I personally love the overblown self-titled track. Do I think it fits on the album? Absolutely not. But then again, literally nothing on this album fits. Um, so yeah, that's my thoughts on Cherry Bomb. Yeah. Um, All right. I went with Bastard, Tyler's debut. Um, you know, Tyler definitely was not the first, you know, quote unquote edgy rapper. But I, I think his style of angst and his just his persona definitely stood out. Perhaps it was because of his age and you know the the fact that he was just a kid, maybe. Uh, give him a lot, gave him a lot more room to just be completely unrestrained, unforgiving, and just offensive without any real precautions, um, for better or for worse. Um, but these things are definitely, you know, the, the lyrical themes and Tyler's performances are definitely the standout thing on Bastard for me. Um, however, I do think there's a bit more to this record than just, you know, edgy for the sake of edgy. I think that it is a deeply emotional album and. The Tyler we get on Bastard is definitely hurt. He's definitely scarred. And, you know, he a lot of that definitely bleeds through the music. Um, I do think there are moments where, you know, Tyler really, really shines. But I also do think there's moments where, um, you know, a lot of the problems that appear on Goblin do appear in, in much lower quantities on Bastard. I think sometimes the instrumentals are rough. Sometimes this adds to the track and to the anger, but sometimes it's a little unlistenable. Um, the the flows as well. I think sometimes Tyler just seems very focused. He's on point, and then there's other times where it's like he's just going on some sort of psychotic ramble, and it, it's quite hard to follow. It's it's a good, decent album. It's definitely a mixed bag. Um, but I I don't think it really holds the candle to any of his better works. Okay, and with that in mind, my favorite tracks off of Cherry Bomb are Death Camp, The Brown Stains of Darkies Latifa. And Smuckers, my least favorite tracks are Cherry Bomb, uh, Keep the O's, which is my least favorite Tyler song, uh, Two Seater, and Okaga, California. Really? No love for Two Seater. Wow. We have almost the reverse list for favorites and least favorites. Uh, my <laughs> yeah. my favorite tracks? I, I don't know, man. It's just like, I don't know. The Neo Soul tracks just don't do a whole lot for me on Cherry oh, Bomb, wow. honestly. Okay. Uh, my favorite tracks are Two Seater, Smuckers, and my controversial pick, uh, Cherry Bomb, the self-titled track. And my least favorite song on the album is The Brown Stains of Dark East Latifah Part 6 through 12 Remix. Um, Damn, I like my favorite that song. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite tracks on Bastard are Bastard, Seven, Asmoke, and Inglorious. My least favorite tracks are Slow It Down, Jack and the Beanstalk, and Tina. Those are some great picks for, for best tracks, by the way. I love all those songs. <laughs> yeah. Okay, moving on to our number five picks. I chose Bastard. I chose Cherry Bomb. All right. This is kind of my first hot take of the day. Uh, my next pick is Call Me If You Get Lost. Ooh. Oh, yep. really? Yes, really. Oh, damn. Call Me If You Get Lost. Right, normal order, so <laughs> I, I yeah. probably won't. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
So, Master. <laughs> Tyler's debut mixtape was one of the earliest projects from the Odd Future days, and while there's a few aspects of this mixtape that haven't really aged all that well, and as we all know, Tyler would go on to do so much better, Bastard was a solid outing from an angry, edgy 17-year-old, and it was indicative of Tyler's potential from the get-go as a producer and as a lyricist even at some points. You know, a lot of the production on Bastard is really in tune with this very dark, minimal, synth-heavy and cloudy sound, often with a bit of a sinister undertone, and while it may certainly have some moments that are rough around the edges, I like a lot of the beats on this tape. You know, they have this raw feel to them that complements the types of things Tyler is saying on this record. The more cloudy beats even are great in my opinion. I like the textures and the atmospheres, and they're really nice, yet dark vibe. Plus, when the beats go for a more, like, hold on, plus when the beats that go for a more, you can tell from the get-go that Wait, what am I even saying here? What? <laughs> My notes are screwed, never mind. You can tell from the get-go that he was heavily influenced by Pharrell, and there's even a track on this thing that uses the same samples that were used in MF Doom's track One Beer. You know, when it comes to Tyler himself, I think he's shown himself to be a solid rapper. He embraced a lot of horrorcore and hardcore hip-hop elements, and he definitely takes a page out of the book of early Eminem, especially since a lot of what he's saying on this record is very dark and often offensive. If we take that away, though... And if we take away the vulgarity and the shock value of this record, Tyler is a gifted songwriter in a few cases here, especially on tracks like The Opener Bastard and The Closer and Glorious, both of which, you know, go over his introspective feelings and thoughts over his deadbeat dad. Uh, the track Blow, even, is rapping from the perspective of, well, the track Blow, Tyler is rapping from the perspective of Ted Bundy. And, uh, you know, the track Pigs Fly, as well, is a pretty, is a pretty good lyrical moment, I would say, like, solidly written, I would say. Now, plus, it keeps consistent with the themes throughout its duration. It's one of the more cohesive early Odd Future albums. I think Bastard also has some really enjoyable tracks too. It's not a consistent album by any means, but there's a lot of tracks on this album that I do actually enjoy. Oh, but my ma my main issues with Bastard, you know, boil down to the following. I think there's some moments on the production that are just, you know, a bit dated and a bit tacky from the era from which it came. Uh, there's some tracks on this album that are pretty uninteresting, often quite boring and low impact. Uh, while they may not be as much of an issue as they were on Goblin, some of Tyler's, you know, very edgy, shock value lyrics are a detriment to some of my enjoyment for some tracks. And they, of course, haven't aged well. And the track with Jasper and Taco is awful. No disrespect to them, but that track is terrible. <laughs> you know, with all that in mind, though, I, I think this is a very dark, aggressive, nihilistic mixtape, and it's a very solid foundation for Tyler to begin, and shows that he has potential. Plus, there's some good tracks in here, so, yeah, it's decent. Um... I went with Cherry Bomb, and spoiler alert, kind of, I agree with almost everything Jackson said. I definitely respect this album for exploring new directions for Tyler, and individually looking at a lot of these tracks, they're, they're solid tracks. The instrumental work on a lot of these tracks is very lush, very uh, eclectic, but it's when the whole album comes together, it just is such a cesspool of random ideas that just kind of fly by you. Um, I, I, there's not really a, a coherent theme or a coherent structure to this project to h hold on to. Um, and, you know, there's there's a lot of variety to this album, which in of itself isn't a bad thing, but it, it does become a very quite exhausting because, you know, nothing really transitions well. Um, a lot of the songs just feel out of place. There's a lot that, you know, are very gritty on the... On the they're both... There's tracks on both ends of the spectrum. There's tracks that are just very gritty, very in your face, very loud. There's tracks that are very soulful, very um, somber, very melancholic. And they just kind of get slapped together effortlessly on a cherry bomb. Um, there's definitely some highlight moments. I just, as an album experience, this project definitely suffers because of just inconsistency in terms of quality and mostly inconsistency in terms of ideas and structure. Uh, yeah, so uh, I picked Call Me If You Get Lost. Um, so the night this album came out, I listened to it three times in a row, and then I wrote like this super long five-page review. So to essentially summarize that entire uh, review, um, this album is just good. I don't think it's anything more or anything less than good. Uh, my biggest problem with this album, self-admittedly, is that I wanted something a little more emotion-provoking from Tyler. Uh, to me, Tyler makes the best music when it's emotionally charged. His music has been there for me since, you know, when I needed it, since I started high school. And it'll be there for me when I start college this upcoming fall. 
And I guess that Tyler being braggadocious and essentially writing one big victory lap album just doesn't do it for me as much as the stuff that delves more into his personal life. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's songs on this album that I love. Massa, Juggernaut, Manifesto, and Hot Wind Blows have been and will be on repeat this entire summer, but tracks like Lemonhead, and What's Your Name, and Wilshire are what's preventing me from giving this thing anything above a 7. The previously mentioned 42 Doug feature as well as Young Boy's feature on What's Your Name both do absolutely nothing for me, and Wilshire, while doing a good job lyrically, has some of the most boring production out of any Tyler song I've ever heard. I mean, it is literally almost 9 minutes of the same loop over and over again with no change. Um, I was also a little disappointed when the marketing of, the, of this album made it seem like it was going to be this big concept album like Igor was, and so when the actual album barely featured any of the themes it was advertising to have, I was a little disappointed. Um, you know, I Igor, I think, was such a big moment conceptually. I think from the moment it was marketed to the second I was done listening to it, I felt the, the themes throughout, and with Call Me If You Get Lost, I think he heavily missed that mark. Um... So yeah, once again, an album that's just good. Nothing more and nothing less. Damn, hot takes only on the taped podcast. You love to hear it. Hear it first. Oh yeah. It's podcast. Okay, my favorite tracks from Bastard are Bastard, Seven, Blow, Pigs Fly, Ass Milk, VCR Wheels, Session and Inglorious. My least favorite tracks are Tina, Odd Toddlers, French, Slow It Down, and Sarah. Um, my favorite tracks on Cherry Bomb are Buffalo, Find Your Wings, The Brown Stains of Darkies Latifah, and Smuckers. My least favorite tracks are Blow My Load and Keep the O's. Uh, yeah, so my favorite track tracks on Call Me If You Get Lost are Hot Wind Blows, Massa, Manifesto, and Juggernaut, and my least favorite track is Lemonhead. Moving on to our number four picks, I chose Wolf. I also chose Wolf. Uh, I chose Bastard. Damn, Bastards are pretty high, damn. I, I, I really like that mixtape a lot. Okay. Wolf. In the grander scheme of Tyler the Creator's discography, Wolf can kind of get a little overlooked. And while I don't think that it's a perfect album, I think it's really great, and it's easily the best album that Tyler made during the odd future era of his career. You know, Nostalgia Factor definitely plays a pivotal role in my admiration of Wolf. At one point in my life, it was my favorite Tyler the Creator album, and it was the first album that I ever heard from him, actually. Of course, it isn't my favorite by him anymore, obviously, but I still think that it's one of his best, and that can be attributed to a few things. You know, firstly, the songwriting. A lot of old songwriting choices that Tyler had back in the day do maintain themselves on here, but it doesn't really feel as try-hard or as prevalent as it did on Goblin. And in turn, this allowed Tyler to open himself up more emotionally, and Whenever he does vent his anger, he does it in a way that feels much more compelling. You know, some of it is very immature, definitely, but the more introspective tracks that convey Tyler's emotions uh, incredibly well are done very well, and I appreciate it on that merit quite a lot, since some of Tyler's best introspective tracks are on this album, like Answer, Lone, and Awkward to an extent. You now, this was also the first instance in Tyler's discography where he wanted to piece together a properly cohesive narrative. You know, he does that with the characters of Wolf, Sam, and Salem at Camp Flognaw throughout this album, and he manages to piece together a very cohesive and solid narrative. You know, you'd only get better at better at it down the road, but Wolf's narrative is written well. You know, Tyler's rapping has gotten better on this album as well, his entertainment factor is turned up by 10 on a few cuts here, especially on the more banger-esque ones. His delivery's pretty great too, and he was, a, he was great at creating a fun atmosphere and a serious one. He was able to find a nice balance between the two. The production on Wolf is easily some of the best in the early Odd Future days. In comparison with Bastard and Goblin, it feels much more refined, well-groomed, vibrant, and actually enjoyable. It does feel very in line with his Odd Future sound, but it also feels a lot more intricate, nuanced, and eclectic. Hell, even some elements that Tyler would end up mastering down the road are slightly making their first impressions here, with some elements of jazz rap and neo-soul neo turning up in spades here. And each beat sounds well put together, fleshed out, very enjoyable, and act as a solid foundation for what Tyler and uh, his guests are doing on here. A few grievances that I have with Wolf, though, include the album's length and the way that it flows towards the end. The album itself is 17 minutes, and I feel like I'd have it a bit higher on my list if a few filler tracks were cut out from the track list. And tracks such as Tamale and Trashwang just completely un like 
feel completely unnecessary to me. And no, I love Tamale. I'm sorry, I just don't really like that song. Wow. That, wow. <laughs> that's all I have to complain about in relation to Wolf, though. Besides that, I think that it's a great album. It's a moment where Tyler was itching at his full potential. I like the narrative. I love the production. I love what Tyler does in this album. And as a whole, I feel like it's one of his better records. It's easily his best in the Odd Future era. <clears throat> um, yeah, I also went with Wolf. Uh, I agree with a lot of what you said again. Um, following his first two albums, Wolf was really a, a big step in a more mature, a more complete direction for Tyler, I think. It still retains a lot of the grit and angst of his first two projects, but as a whole, it's definitely a lot more mellow, a lot more mature, and a lot more meticulously crafted. Um, the instrumental work here is just so much more high effort than his first two albums. It still has some very rough and raw moments, but even those are a lot more tasteful and a lot less chaotic than, you know, the very sloppy and all over the place instrumentals that were often found on his first two projects. Um, Tyler's softer side also definitely starts to shine through on moments here. Um, you know, there's just, as I said, there's still a lot of gritty moments, but there's there's also a lot of very genuine, very heartfelt, very soulful moments. Um, he does kind of, this is where he kind of starts, you know, getting some of those soul influences into his music. Um, I think it, it's a very good album. I can't really complain about it. I just, it feels like the start of something great. It's not quite there yet. Obviously, we know now that Tyler would go on to create greater things. But for what it is and for the for the time period, it's definitely a standout album in his discography. Um, it's definitely an essential Tyler album, and it's definitely a very good one. I'd agree. Yeah, uh, so my pick was uh, Bastard. Uh, in my opinion, Tyler's debut is one of the most underrated projects in Tyler's discography, if not one of the most underrated mixtapes of all time. People seriously underestimate how unique and fresh this project was when it first came out, and it absolutely undeniably changed the face of hip-hop forever, being the Odd Future project that launched them to stardom uh, right at the beginning. Uh, despite coming out in 2009, Bastard still aged infinitely better than any song off of the album that followed it, and is the perfect mixtape to showcase that Tyler has been able to master so many different sectors of the hip-hop world. Throughout the course of the album, Tyler deals with the struggles of growing up without a father and feeling like a social outcast, lashing out in the form of his alter ego, Wolf Haley. Much like Goblin, this album's highs come in the form of the opening and closing tracks, cleverly named Bastard and Inglorious as an homage to the Quentin Tarantino film. Both of the tracks are incredibly raw, and it's genuinely shocking to see Tyler talk so openly about his dad like that at just the age of 17. I especially like the use of the Devil's Tritone chords that Tyler uses on the title track, as it fits with the opening line, this is what the devil plays before he goes to sleep. The rest of the mixtape sees Tyler and his Odd Future groupmates use violent language as a way to rebel against the situations that they had, befo that they had been forced into, as well as featuring some more fun and upbeat tracks such as Session and Tina, which I actually like a lot, by the way. That track is fun as hell. Um, but those tracks humanize the group members and make the listener feel as though uh, he is as much a part of the mixtape as the actual OF members are. The mi this mixtape is a must-listen for any Tyler fan, any Odd Future fan, and anyone interested in the history of hip-hop. Uh, just make sure not to play it around your dad. My favorite tracks off of Wolf are Answer, Colossus, Party Isn't Over, Campfire, Bimmer, uh, I Fucking Hate You, Pigs, Rusty, Lone, Wolf, Jamba, Awkward, and 48. My least favorite tracks are Trash Wang and Tamale. I'm so sorry, Jackson. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Um, <clears throat> uh, my favorite tracks also on Wolf are Jamba, Cowboy, Answer, Colossus, and Pigs. My least favorite tracks are Trashwang and Tamale. Uh, yeah, my favorite tracks off of Bastard are Bastard, Ass Milk, and Inglorious, and my least favorite track is French. All right, we're in the top three now. Here we go. And my number three pick, I chose Call Me If You Get Lost. I chose Igor. Wow. Wait, but, I, um, yeah, damn, that was surprising. Mm. Uh, I chose Flower Boy. Shit! <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, that, this is insane. That caught me off guard. So what? Ah. The Igor one caught me off guard. Caught me off guard. I I expect to call me if you get lost to be both of your picks next. If I'm being honest. Oh god. Well, I mean, it's my pick now, so I think I should start talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. So um, yeah, 
Call Me If You Get Lost. This is the latest album in the Tyler the Creator discography, and it's super new, so if if we're being real here, we haven't really given it that much time yet to see Very true. if it'll even be able to stand out in the grander scheme of Tyler's discography. But since I have it in my top three, you know already that I really like it. I actually think it's pretty damn great, and it may just be my bias for new Tyler playing into my praise for this, but I just think this is such a blast to listen to because it's so much fun. Now, when we compare Call Me If You Get Lost to many other albums in the Tyler discography, it features, um, excuse me, it, it features this kind of feel that stems from all across Tyler's discography. Like, he returns to a lot of the hardcore hip-hop elements of his Odd Future Days, the more neo-soul and R&B-tinged cuts that feel prevalent in his newer stuff, and some moments where we get a bit of an introspective route, but this will... But this is well and truly a rap album, and we haven't heard like a proper rap like Tyler album since Wolf or Cherry Bomb. Now, I love the production on this album. Well, it's Tyler we're talking about, of course it's good, but on this album it feels especially fantastic. It's very creative, it's very dense, it's very layered, and some of the sampling utilized on this album is fucking immaculate. I ascend when tracks like Cold Wind Blows, Manifesto, and What's Your Name come on, like, come on, those are all just fantastic to me. Some of the samples are insane. And, um, you know, plus Tyler isn't afraid to try new things too, like the reggae flip on the second half of Sweet, I Thought You Wanted to Dance. You know, all the beats are banging, man. What more can I say on that front? You know, Tyler himself is consistently great on this album. He's not trying to play on any sort, play on any sort of concept. He's not trying to uh, flesh out a narrative or anything like that. He's just simply rapping his ass off and just having fun. That's all it really is. This album has some of the best rapping that Tyler has ever laid to tape. Uh, on fucking God, he's just pumping out infectious bangers, and I can't really ask for more besides that. Now, he does actually have a few topical moments on tracks like Massa, uh, Manifesto, and Wilshire, which are all well-written and done well by Tyler, so you know, there's a bit of substance there, too, to go alongside the bangers. Now, Call Me If You Get Lost feels like a victory lap for Tyler in that regard. I definitely agree with what you were saying there, Jackson. And I can get behind that, especially if the songs are as great as they are on here. The only issue that I have with the album are two tracks specifically. Lemonhead because 42, the 42 Doug feature was mediocre and the beat sounds so cheap, and Wilshire because it's too long and the mixing is awful on headphones. That's it. Besides that, fucking banging album, banging production, great rapping. Uh, you know, I'd say with the test of time, this will probably stand out as one of his more consistent efforts, but we'll just have to wait and see. For now, call me if you get lost at number three. Um, yeah, don't let the number three spot be you know, deceiving. I, I adore Igor. It's an incredible album. And it's definitely the most unique project Tyler has under his belt, in my opinion. Um, you know, there's there's no real well no real way to precisely, you know, box this album genre wise. Um he tries just a whole lot of new stuff. It's very experimental. It's way more experimental than even Cherry Bomb. The difference maker here is that it's as a whole project very, very cohesive. Um, you know, Tyler really makes just one cohesive, surreal project, one cohesive, surreal experience, uh, and an album that just defies all convention. Uh, and it does so much in like a rather short uh, run of time as well, which I, I definitely do appreciate when an album can explore a lot of things in a very concise manner. Um, yeah, it's it's a fantastic album. Um, Soul is definitely the foundation of this project. It's definitely a it's something that, you know, wasn't per perhaps too unexpected when you look at uh, the direction Tyler's music was heading in. But um, to this extent, I I personally did not see this coming. And, you know, he definitely proved a lot of people wrong. He definitely proved his versatility as an artist, not just as a rapper. Um, and, you know, he just blew things out of the water here. He definitely created a, a great project, one of his best, and definitely his most unique. I just... Overall, I think he has more complete projects. All right. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> uh, I, I chose Flower Boy. Um, so despite being one of Tyler's most critically acclaimed projects to date, Flower Boy really took some time to grow on me. Uh, but once it clicks, uh, my God, does it click. Flower Boy is the Was moment. Upon? Is what upon the clicks? It took, it took, some, it took some time to grow on me. Flower Boy? Yes, that was definitely uh -huh. on purpose. 100% on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely was on purpose. Yes, definitely. Um, 
Oh yeah, uh, so Flower Boy is the moment in Tyler's career where he stopped being seen as the loudmouth, dad-hating, homophobic rapper that edgy teen- teenagers listened to, and instead became the well-respected, full of talent, and openly bisexual artist that edgy teenagers hate. Flower Boy is probably the prettiest sounding Tyler album as his production style throughout this project matched the summary vibe that the album cover sets. Throughout the album, Tyler raps about his struggles with becoming successful, boredom, his failures on Cherry Bomb, and most famously being stuck in the closet. One of the biggest strong suits that this album takes full advantage of is its features. Tyler found a way to incorporate the voices and rap talents of a myriad of artists, and every single person fits in perfectly with the song they're placed on. Another thing that I love about Flower Boy is that it contains such a wide variety of tracks without breaking the flow and tone of the album. There really is a song on this thing for any occasion. Sad? Listen to Garden Shed. Relaxed? Listen to Boredom. Doing homework? Listen to Enjoy Right Now Today. Trying to get hyped? Listen to Who Dat Boy. I mean, you get the idea. The diversity is a strong suit. Flower Boy is a special album for so many, and it is by far one of the most quintessential Tyler albums out now. It's the first major sign of his musical maturation, and frankly, it's done a really goddamn it's done really goddamn good. All right, all right. My favorite tracks from "Call Me If You Get Lost" are "Corso," "Lumberjack," "What's Your Name," uh, "Hot Wind Blows," "Manifesto," "Sweet I Thought You Wanted to Dance," "Sir Baudelaire," and "Run It Up." My least favorite tracks are "Lemonhead" and "Wilshire." Uh, my favorite tracks on Igor are Earthquake, I th- I Think, Running Out of Time, New Magic Wand, What's Good, uh, Gone Gone, Thank You, and my least favorite track is I Don't Love You Anymore. Uh, yeah, so my favorite tracks off of Flower Boy are Forward, Garden Shed, and Boredom, and my least favorite track is Pothole. And we're here at the top two. Ooh. And for my number two pick, I chose Flower Boy. I chose Call Me If You Get Lost. And I chose Igor. Alright, love the diversity. So, (laughs) yeah, Flower Boy. Kind of goes without saying since, you know, Flower Boy's reputation speaks for itself, really. It's the moment in Tyler's career where he truly managed to reach his full potential. And considering that Cherry Bomb was the album that Tyler released before this one, the leap in musicality and quality is all the more impressive and pretty damn monumental. Plus, to think that this was the same angry kid that made albums like Bastard and Goblin is still kind of mind-blowing, honestly. Now, Flower Boy was unlike anything that Tyler had ever done up to this point. Throughout his early discography, he shows hints of what he was capable of and what sonic directions he was willing to take. Flower Boy was the point where those sounds and styles really came into fruition and Tyler ended up mastering them. As throughout Flower Boy's runtime, we're hit with a sound that's just so lush and incredibly stellar. It manages to convey the summery melancholy that perfectly reflects the mood of the lyrics, and it ma- it doesn't have a single moment where it falters or sounds weak. In fact, the instrumentation on this album is impeccable, since it's so smooth, and a lot of the cuts on here are just, just incredible sounding. And while Tyler definitely explores sounds that were a lot more reflective of his Neo soul and warm sound, he still has his fair share of bangers like Who That Boy and I Ain't Got Time. Sure, they may not be as hardcore as some of Tyler's older stuff, but they still go the fuck off and help add to the flow of the album. Now, another impressive point here was Tyler's lyricism, which was incredible on Flower Boy. Up to this point, you would perceive Tyler as this troubled guy who vented his emotions through anger and storytelling. But Flower Boy is easily his most personal and poignant album to date. Tyler is reflective on himself as a person and just going under numerous things about himself and his vices. Throughout Flower Boy, we see Tyler open himself more as open himself up more as a personal who is vulnerable, and he reflects on themes like loneliness, depression, self-discovery, and, and much more. Oftentimes Tyler's lyrics are incredibly moving, and he conveys his emotions in such a real and intimate way. The intimacy and honesty of this project really is one of its key strengths. You know, Tyler's rapping is very good too, and his singing has only gotten way better here as well. Now, some of my absolute favorite Tyler the Creator tracks are on this very album. There's some tracks that I love to death outside of the context of Tyler's discography, and this album flows immaculately from track to track. As an album experience, it's it does feel a little complete. Until we get towards the end, because there's a few things that don't work for me. And it's mostly just how the album finishes as I think this album has a pretty weak end with some tracks aside from November that are just way too redundant for my liking. Not to mention, the Lil Wayne feature has always bothered me because what? it just feels so out of place on this album and where it resides. 
Oh. I don't know, it just rubs me the wrong wow. way, and it just kind of takes me out of the track. I don't know, I'm just not a Lil Wayne guy, you know? Hmm, I see. Um, aside, from, aside from that, Flower Boy is great. I love this album. It's easily one of his best records, and it pains me to put it at the number two because I do think it's great, but there's just one album I prefer. Um, yeah, I went with his newest album, Call Me If You Get Lost. Um, to me, this project has a little bit of everything when it comes to, you know, Tyler's overall sound throughout the years. Um, there's, I see a little bit of Cherry Bomb in here. I see a little bit of Wolf. I see a little bit of Flower Boy, a little bit of Igor. It's a, it definitely does, just like you two said, feel like a bit of a victory lap. Um, and, you know, it still does manage to cover some new ground stylistically for Tyler. Um, but at this, but you know, at its core, it just kind of it takes a step back to basics almost, and uh, back to a style and atmosphere that he had already explored in the past, and he has already proved himself to be you know comfortable in, and you know he does so with a more matured and more retrospective outlook. Um, I I do think the focal point of this project is Tyler, his flows, his pen game, his performances. He really does bring you know things back to basics, but you know. The project just emphasizes just his ability as a rapper, as um, a producer, as a singer. It really is, you know, a, sh- a fantastic showcasing of all of his talents. Um, it's really consistent. There's really not many weak moments on this album. And, you know, it's probably his most basic album since maybe Wolf. Uh, it definitely, you know, it definitely is in the confines of just, you know, hip hop jazz rap it doesn't really try too much new but at the same time he perfects the sound that you know a lot of people already associate him with um further on this project um obviously given it's my number two pick i love this album i can understand the claim it's getting just like his last few records and you know it's a crucial moment in his career i think he's showing everyone that even in his 30s he's still tyler he's still the same tyler he always was he still got it and I think it's it's bound to go down as uh, an important moment in his career for sure. All right, yeah. So I picked uh, Igor. Um, I've said it once and I'll say it again, but my first listen to Igor is by far the best first listen experience I've had with any album ever. Uh, I mean, track after track after track impressed me over and over again to the point where this album is a borderline ten. This album contains some of my favorite Tyler songs of all time, with tracks like Igor's theme, New Magic Wand, and the best Tyler album closer of all time, Are We Still Friends? Igor somehow finds a way to cover so many different vibes into one short project, whilst also sticking with the toxic relationship theme that this album carries throughout the entirety of the project. One of the biggest strong suits on this thing is easily the usage of synths on nearly every track. I mean, Tyler's production has seen so many changes in his music since his very first mixtape was released, and yet his infatuation with synths has stayed relatively consistent throughout his discography. But here, it feels different, almost nostalgic in a way, reminiscent of the 80s. Tyler also continues to find unique ways to use his features, mixing and distorting the voices of Lil Uzi Vert, Kanye West, and Solange to the point where they are unrecognizable, treating their voices like just another instrument in the mix. Another thing that I love about this record is the way that Tyler steps back from hip-hop throughout the entire project, experimenting with neo-soul and R&B. In my opinion, this is Tyler's most unique album to date, and I love it for that. Um, one more thing I just want to add is that, like I said with, the Call Me, with Call Me If You Get Lost, I think the Igor's album rollout to, to release point is a lot more, uh, it's just better overall. I think that the vibe that he set up and the storyline that he was pitching in his marketing uh, paid off a lot better with Igor. And I, I just, the whole vibe of that era for him just f- has a certain feeling to it that's so addicting and infatuating to, to dive into. And I think that that's something that I'll always remember about this album and just in general. All right. Uh, my favorite tracks off of Flower Boy are See You Again, Who That Boy, Boredom, 911 Mr. Lonely, November, Forward, Garden Shed, and I Ain't Got Time. My least favorite tracks are Dropping Seeds, Glitter, and Enjoy Right Now Today. Um, my favorite tracks on Call Me If You Get Lost are Corso, Lemonhead, What's Your Name, Lumberjack, Massa, Manifesto, Rise, and Juggernaut. My least favorite track is Run It Up. 
Uh, yeah, so my favorite track, tracks off of Igor are Igor's theme, New Magic Wand, and Are We Still Friends? And my least favorite track is I Don't Love You Anymore. And now we've made it to the number one. Here we are. And, of course, a process of elimination, my number one pick is Igor. Uh, my number one pick is Flower Boy. And my number one pick is Wolf. Uh, <laughs> big big shocker I saw, there. I, I, I could see that coming. Yeah, I know. Big shocker with uh, that Big one, shocker but... there. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Igor. What a fucking phenomenal album. To me, Igor is Tyler the Creator's absolute best album. It's Tyler mo- at his most artistically creative. It's one of Tyler's most insane sounding albums. It's one of his best written albums as well. And to me, it's his most consistently fantastic body of work to date. Now, when Igor came out and when I listened to it for the first time, I honestly didn't get it at first. It was a bit confused. That I was a bit confused as to, you know, what what Tyler was trying to achieve with this album, and it was uh, pretty jarring to me considering, you know, Flower Boy came out prior to this. But the more that I listened to this album and the more that I understood what Tyler was trying to do with this the more that I grew to absolutely adore this album. So much so that when... So much so that I think it's Tyler's best album to date. Not to mention, it's just such a fun and feel-good album for me. Now, sonically and stylistically, Igor is pretty unique in Tyler's discography, and I find it to be a pretty unique record in the grander scheme of, you know, Tyler's Lane, alternative hip-hop, you know, R&B, and, and even Neo Soul, as we see Tyler essentially delve into a sound that is aesthetically very lo-fi, yet very creative, and in what it tries to do with layers and textures in the production. You know, layers of psychedelic textures, record static and fuzzy synths are present all throughout this album's runtime. And this kind of rough exploration to me makes Igor one of Tyler's most cohesive sounding and, you know, funnily enough, refined albums in his discography. And from front to back, it just sounds incredible to me. There isn't a single instrumental on this album that falls flat for me. And it's honestly a fucking fantastic display of sonic creativity and playfulness. Igor also sees Tyler stylistically dabble, now obviously into more soul and R&B, more than he ever has before, and he opts to sing a lot more. He doesn't ditch the rapping at all, he still does his fair share of that and throws in his fair share of bangers, like on um, New Magic Wand and uh, What's Good. But for the most part, Tyler is singing and delivering on some R&B and soul and pop influence tracks, most of which are incredible, and I think that Tyler adapts to this sound incredibly well. He uses like a lot of pitch shifting a lot on this album, which works for a fair amount of the album given the sound of the album and you know for what it's worth i think it's really unique you know it's a unique sound for tyler and in general just unique sound to this album and um for me it often elevates a lot of the tracks here because the melodies are just so addicting you know like i said earlier i think igor is his best written album as well you know sure it may not be as introspective as flower boy or even wolf to an extent but It's a pretty compelling and well-written narrative that only further ties the album together as this one cohesive unit. In concept, it's a breakup album centered around, you know, this love triangle. And throughout Tyler, the creator's, um, you know, you know, I mean, throughout this runtime, I mean, I should say, it just does such a good job at portraying the emotions and feelings going into the relationship being told here. And, you know, what stage the relationship is at with, which is an interesting little detail for me. And... Now, I also feel like it has some of Tyler's you know, best written tracks, like, you know, A Boy Is A Gun, Running Out Of Time, Gone Gone Thank You, Earthquake, and Puppet, just to name a few. Some of my absolute favorite Tyler The Creator tracks are on this album. It has, it's probably his most consistent and gratifying track list, in my opinion. It's kind of hard to put into words how much I actually really adore this album, but honestly, I'll just leave it at this. I find it to be his most creative album, and generally speaking... I haven't really got much of a flaw or anything with this album. I just love it that much. I think it's his best album. Um, I went with Flower Boy, which, in my opinion, personally, is Tyler's defining moment. Um, it's an incredibly fulfilling project across all departments. And in, in my opinion, it definitely ushered in a new era of Tyler. and An era of complete emotional transparency and poignancy. Unlike anything he's released ever before, it just feels like his emotional emotional shackles are just completely lifted, completely gone. And he's finally embracing himself in a way he never had before. Um, you know, long gone is the burying of his emotions between below piles and piles of shock value and aggression. Um, Flower Boy is soft-spoken, it's lush, it never tries to be something it's not. 
and you know it's easily the best look we've ever gotten into Tyler's emotional uh, emotional side and I do think it's his mo- his most intimate album um the instrumental work here is incredible it's very lush very warm and effortlessly eclectic it, it, we get bits of neo so we get bits of R&B bits of jazz rap bits of synth funk everything just comes together seamlessly the production on this album is just stellar um tyler also in my opinion is at his most consistent lyrically um it's just as i said before we get a very honest look into his mind an honest look into his psyche and he just puts his emotions to pen just amazingly it's easily my favorite tyler album it's one of my favorite hip-hop albums of all time and yeah it's it's my number one pick flower boy yeah, so uh, I went with Wolf. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this album just because, uh, A, I already have a whole video about it, and, and B, it, it's really hard for me to describe to people what makes this album so special to me. Uh, while Bastard was technically the song that got me into Tyler, Wolf was the album that got me into music. And, I mean, just for everyone listening to this, even making a nostalgia, I mean, just think about the first album that you really got into. There's something so special about that 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 goes beyond words and beyond music there's something that you 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 can't just describe it's just a a feeling you know of of that first one that first one that kind of got the ball rolling um yeah i mean it was was the first the very first jackson burns core album i ever stumbled upon and i'm just i'm so unbelievably glad that it is because throughout the years since i first heard it it has been consistently one of my favorites of all time uh, you couldn't pay me any amount of money to change anything on this record. It is one of the closest things to perfect I've ever stumbled across. Um, to anyone who hasn't listened to any of Tyler's older work, including Wolf, I would highly recommend at least listening to this album. Uh, it's a great piece of music that I will forever hold close to my heart. Um, yeah, that's all I really have to say. I, for me, this album this, this album just ascends music to me. Uh, what And... Even with that being said, the music is fucking fantastic on this album. It has some of my favorite songs of all time. Um, and as of right now, it is my number two album of all time. So, um, yeah. I mean, what, what more can I really say about that? You should go, You should all watch that Wolf video, by the way. It's actually really great. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. All right. So, my favorite tracks <laughs> off of Igor are Igor's Theme, Earthquake, Running Out of Time, A Boy's a Gun. What's Good, New Magic Wand, and Gone Gone Thank You. My least favorite track is I Don't Love You Anymore. Um, my favorite tracks on Flower Boy are Forward, uh, Where the Where This Flower Blooms, See You Again, Who Dat Boy, Pothole, Garden Shed, Boredom, I Ain't Got Time, 911 Mr. Lonely, and November. My least favorite track is Enjoy Right Now Today. Uh, yeah, my favorite tracks off of Wolf are Wolf, Cowboy, Answer, Colossus, uh, one of my favorite three-track runs in music history, uh, Pigs, Parking Lot, and Rusty, and then uh, the closing track, Lone, and my least favorite track off of the album is Awkward. And we did it! We ranked every Tony mm-hmm. the Great There you album. have it. Short and, sweet ep- short and sweet episode. Thank you so much for coming on, Jackson. We really appreciate of it. Of course. Thank Glad you, to be here, man. This is a ton of fun. Yeah, and we hope to have you back on in the future, hopefully. So Yeah, for sure, anytime. Yeah, I'll hit you up whenever you want to come back. Absolutely. All right, so. All right, so, with that in mind, thank you guys so much for checking out today's episode of The Taped Podcast. I really hope that you enjoyed. Who did you agree with more? What are some of your favorite Tyler albums? What are some of your least favorite albums from him? Please let us know. Um, of course, necessary links will be in the description to all of our individual YouTube channels, our, all, our own uh, Rate Your Music and Album of the Year pages. Of course, check out Jackson's channel, check out his Twitter as well, and uh, check out the Good Enough podcast as well. We had the the rest of the lads here on for the previous episode, so you should go check that <laughs> out as well. And, um, shameless plug, and with that in mind, my name's been Mickey T. I'm Nostalgia, I'm a critic, but my name's not Doug. <laughs> and I'm uh, Jackson Remember Burns. It so we don't have to. <laughs> and yeah, see ya! Peace.